On November 2, 2011, Anatoly Yurevich Moskvin, a Russian scholar and historian, was arrested. In his apartment, 26 dead bodies, all of girls between the ages of 3 and 25, were identified. These corpses had no obvious resemblance of human corpses. At the first look, they looked like oversized dolls. It took an extensive investigative effort of the Investigative Committee of Russia in the Nizhny Novgorod region to uncover the disturbing truth beneath those oversized dolls. What they found was grossly disturbing and simply dumbfounding. In this video, we discuss the life of Russian mummifier Anatoly Moskvin. Anatoly Moskvin was born on the 1st of September 1966 in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, where he lived for most of his life. At a very young age, still as a schoolboy, Moskvin cultivated the weird habit of visiting cemeteries just for the fun of it. When boys his age were scared to death of stepping into cemeteries, Moskvin developed a liking for it. He would spend hours on end walking through the cemeteries in Nizhny Novgorod. Moskvin's love for the cemetery was beyond normal. Underlying it was a fascination for the dead. In an article written about Moskvin, he narrates that one incident that began his foray into necromancy. Moskvin told the story of a burial procession he had witnessed while in his childhood. It was the funeral of an 11-year-old girl. Moskvin stood watching the procession. Suddenly, some of the participants of the procession grabbed a hold of Moskvin. They gave him instructions to kiss the face of the deceased girl. Moskvin did not fancy such an act but what he felt did not matter to these guys. One of the aggressors pushed Moskvin's face to the face of the late girl. He had no choice. He had to kiss the dead girl. In Moskvin's words, that singular event was the beginning of his love for the dead. In his eyes, he had found his life's obsession. The name of the deceased 11-year-old girl was Natasha Petrova. Moskvin did not just kiss her once, but twice, and then a third time. He felt the connection with the dead girl. The mother of the girl seemed to perceive it too. She gave Moskvin a ring, placed it on his finger, and then placed another wedding ring on the finger of the late Natasha. And just like that, Anatoly Moskvin was married to a dead 11-year-old girl. He was just 13. Strange as it is for Moskvin, this was an eye-opener into the belief of magic and the beginning of his lifelong fascination with the dead. It is difficult to confirm whether this story is true or if it is just a mere fascination of Moskvin's mind, considering it was related by Moskvin himself. However, whether true or not, this story was nothing compared to the events that happened afterwards, events that eventually defined the life and times of Anatoly Moskvin. Moskvin attended Moscow State University, where he graduated with a degree from the Faculty of Philology. His major academic interest was in Celtic history and folklore. He earned an advanced degree in Celtic history, but what was it about Celtic culture that fascinated Moskvin? It was the nature of the culture which blurred the lines between life and death that attracted Moskvin to this field of study. He would eventually build a reputation for himself and become a published scholar in this research field. In his time, he learned 13 languages and became an expert linguist to further his research and study. Amidst all his achievements as an academic, nothing trumped his obsession with death and the dead. Moskvin developed a keen interest in cemeteries, burial rituals, and the occult. It is believed that in his personal library, Moskvin held a massive collection of 60,000 books, all of which covered his areas of interest. Many who knew him at his faculty described Moskvin as a genius, an expert in his field, and also an eccentric. But no one had a glimpse about the dark side of this man, and he preferred it that way. Moskvin maintained a very private life, even in adulthood. He never dated anyone and he had no desire to marry any living person. After all, according to him, he was already married to an 11-year-old girl in the coffin. Mosfin was a very well-respected scholar. He worked as a lecturer at the Nizhny Novgorod Linguistic University, and he authored several books, papers, and translations thanks to his multilingual talents. But his proudest achievement was always his expertise in the cemeteries. He boasted of having inspected 752 cemeteries on foot, for him, it was an obsession, a dark, demonic obsession. During his many expeditions to these cemeteries, Mosfin would spend his nights in haystacks and sometimes sleep in the cemeteries themselves. On one occasion, he spent the night inside a coffin that was being prepared for a funeral. While many people knew of his weird adventures, no one suspected a thing. 
As far as they were concerned, Mosfin was just a genius who gave himself entirely to his work. While he may not argue with this commitment to his work, still, it was a commitment that had gone way over the line. With time, it became clear what drove Mosfin was not mere papers, articles, and newspaper publications. What really drove Mosfin began from the day when he kissed and married the corpse of an 11-year-old girl. That was the day he tied his nuptials with the dead. By 2009, locals began to notice that something was happening in the cemeteries. They found graves of their loved ones desecrated. In some cases, the bodies of their loved ones had been exhumed without their consent. Initially, the spokesman for Russia's Ministry for Interior suspected that these desecrations were the work of an extremist organization. The ministry resolved to tighten up security and recruit the most experienced extremist crime specialists to investigate the incidents. They were wrong. This was no extremist group at work. It was the work of a man in the league with the dead. A man the whole society respected but had no clue, nor could they have the slightest suspicion that he could have desecrated the graves of a human but they were in for a shock. Two years had gone by, the investigative effort of the Russian authorities yielded no fruit. Mosfin continued to visit the dead and take the corpses. The authorities kept discovering desecrated and empty graves, but they could point fingers at no one. Then in 2011, the Dematseva airport in Moscow was attacked by terrorists. Not long after, the authorities received the call. They were informed of some Muslim graves being desecrated as Nizhny Novgorod. Thinking there was a link between this and the terrorist attack in Moscow, police set on their way to a cemetery where they had received information of a person painting over the pictures of dead Muslims. On arriving there, the police saw the man, Anatoly Moskvin, and this time, he was caught red-handed. The man who had lurked in the shadows for so long had run out of luck. Moskvin was taken into custody, and a team of police officers was dispatched into his apartment. What they had gathered there, and what they eventually revealed to the world, was shocking, horrifying, and disgusting. The world was about to meet the real Anatoly Mosfin, the necrophiliac. In his apartment, the authorities discovered 26 bodies. It was truly an unpleasant sight. There were dead bodies on the shelves, on the sofas, and the bodies stuffed in small rooms full of books. Mosfin had mummified the dead bodies into dolls. It was the reason why his parents, who had seen these dolls, had no clue what they really were. The police discovered a document with instructions on how to make these dolls. Then they also found videos and photographs. The photos and videos captured how Mosfin had desecrated numerous graves and disinterred the bodies. It is estimated that Mosfin had desecrated over 150 graves in his time. Mosfin sat down for an interview, which gave us a glimpse into the mind of the disturbed man. He was asked why he went after the corpses. Moskvin's reply? He felt sorry for them. He claimed that he wanted to bring them back to life using black magic or science. He then launched into a real motivation behind his dehumanizing actions. As an expert of Celtic culture and mythology, Moskvin had learned a lot from this field. He had studied how ancient druids slept on graves to interact with the spirits of the dead. He found the same ritual being carried out by the ancient Yakuts of Siberia. Moskvin adopted this approach. According to him, he would sleep on the graves of children who had died recently. In a supposed conversation with their spirits, Mosfin would inquire that they desire to be brought back to life. Mosfin claimed to have been practicing this ritual for about 20 years. He said that he had never disinterred a body without the permission of their spirits. In explaining why he had the dead bodies in his apartment, Mosfin revealed that old age had prevented him from being able to sleep on the graves of the children anymore. Rather than sleep on their graves, he decided to dig them up and bring him to his apartment. At his apartment, he found it easier to sleep close to them and engage in their conversations. He did this also believing that the spirits of the dead would be more comfortable to speak to him in his apartment and that it would be easier for him to hear the spirits since they were no longer underground. After exhuming the bodies, he dried the corpses with a combination of baking soda and salt, then secured them in dry places inside or around the cemeteries. After the bodies had been dried, Mosfin then took them to his apartment where he turned them into dolls using a variety of techniques. He would wrap up their limbs in strips of clothes and stuff any spaces in their bodies with rags. He even added decorated wax masks over their faces and dressed them up in brightly colored clothes. Mosfin considered them to be his children. According to him, he sang songs to them and watched cartoons with them. He even held birthday parties and celebrated holidays with them. Despite being charged to court, Mosfin was deemed unfit to stand trial after a psychiatric evaluation. 
Instead, he was sent to a psychiatric clinic where he was to be evaluated periodically. Mosfin was diagnosed with a form of paranoid schizophrenia. Then in 2019, following yet another psychiatric evaluation, Mosfin was still deemed too dangerous to be released from psychiatric clinic for home care. Medical personnel at the clinic were undoubtedly sure that Mosfin was a man that was seriously mentally ill and stood no chance to stand trial. This is the story of the Russian man who mummified 26 girls. For more chilling stories like this, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon right beside it. That way, you will never miss an upload. Again, thank you very much for watching and see you guys in the next video.